in the tub <laughs> than he does in the congregation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's no, there's no pride in that shower. There's no pride in that bathtub. You just there naked as a jaybird before God. See, that's the way he sees you anyway. He don't see what you got on. He don't see how pretty you got your hair fit. He don't see that every hair is in place. He don't see that your shoes are shine or they're dull. He don't see that. When he looks at you and I, he sees the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. He's not looking at anything that you and I have done. He's looking at the results of what we did. Right. Amen. 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 <laughs> Revelation 8, verse 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. So your prayers were everlasting. Your prayers go sometimes short. They have meaning. They have meaning with God. They are, they are being poured out before God. You and I, when we pray, they're not in vain. They're not just falling by the wayside. But they're being gathered up. Amen? And one of these days, every time I think about how God gathers up our prayers for that sweet savor, I, I, can, I can just about picture the Lord standing before the throne of grace. And as we pray, He's scooping up our prayers and He's taking a big smell. It becomes as a sweet smelling savor in the nostrils of God. You and I, that means something to me. I don't know whether it means anything to anyone else or not. But it means something to me to know that our Heavenly Father is just waiting upon us to call. He said, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33 and 3. God wants to communicate with you and I. Yes. Amen. There's never a dull moment with God. Amen. Glory. 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 Mm. He's the life of my party. I want Him to be the life of your party. Amen. I want Him to be everything that you desire a father to be. I want Him to be that for you. I want you to have that personal relationship with Him. And you can have it the way you desire it. David said, delight thyself in the Lord. And He will give you the desires of your heart. So as you delight yourself in Him, He's going to pour out upon you and, and just, just cuddle you and hold you and love you. Amen. Amen? Amen? He's not going to cast you aside. You know what I like about it also? Every time I've come before the Lord, He's not asking me to wait. He's not putting me on hold. You ever call a number and on the other end of it when they say, Hello, can you hold? <laughs> and then you're sitting there 15 minutes later and finally they say, Hello? Are you still there? I think they was hoping I would hang up. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> but I don't get that with God. Amen. When I call upon Him, immediately He said, what, what do you desire? What do you need? What do you need? And then I proceed to tell him what I have need of. Amen? And if I don't have a need, Sister Jenna, I just tell him, God, I just came here to praise you today. Amen. I just came to offer thanks for what you've already done. I just came to give you glory and honor for everything that you've done in my life. How you took a nothing and, and built me into something that you would be proud of. Amen? He said, well, brother, did you? You're full of pride? No, I lost that a long time ago. Amen? Amen. God is so good. And He loves you so much. I want to go back to Romans 8, verse 27. I read this one the other night. 
but I want to go back to it because it's so it's so rich and so good for us to understand and realize that through Him and only through Him do we really know how to pray. We know when to pray. Paul said pray without ceasing. Amen. Amen. And I've had people ask me, so well, did you pray when you was working on the job? Yeah. yeah. Did you pray when you were doing this or doing that? Yeah. Pray. Keep our minds stay on Jesus. I like that little course that we used to sing. The devil can't harm you when you mind. Just stay on Jesus. Amen. But Romans 8 27 said, And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. How many of you want to pray toward the will of God? Everybody, you're here. here. If, if we're going to spend time in prayer, let's make sure we do it right. Amen. Let's make sure we get ourselves out of the way. Somebody's hitting me back there. I can hear you. <laughs> Amen. But if you will remove self from that time, you'll find the enrichment of God's Spirit so more fully than what you've ever experienced. Move self out of the way and say, God, here am I. We find so many times that, that people, they're willing to go to church, they're willing to go through the motions, but when it comes to being a witness for the Lord, they, they kind of shrink away from that. They, they think that people won't appreciate them talking to them out in public or whatever. And I've had people tell me, they say, yeah, go ahead and pray for me. And I'd start to do it right there. And they say, oh, no, not here. Not here. I said, wait till you pray. I said, well, I'm praying all the time. All i got to do is just join forces with me. Amen? Amen. And they said, not out here like this. <laughs> I had a fellow down on Main in exchange tell me one day, he said, there's a church on every corner of Fort Worth. Why do y'all have to be out here? I said, because you're here. <laughs> and he looked at me kind of funny. Like he couldn't believe that I would be bold enough to say, because you're here. And I said, you need Jesus. Oh, I go to church. I said, I didn't see you come out of that club. That ain't church. Well, I am the church. I said, no, sir, son, you're not. You're not the church. You, you may be in the church by confession, but you got to possess it to have it. Amen. Amen. I want him as my possession. I want Him. I, I want to go sell out everything that I got. Amen? Now, I'm not talking about selling my home and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about selling me. Get rid of me. Turn me away from everything, Brother West, and just make Him the Lord of all. Amen? I believe that's why Paul said, I, I am declaring to know nothing among you saving Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Resurrected on the third day. Now sitting in the presence of God at His right hand, making intercession for you and I. Amen? People say, oh, oh, don't you just believe this and believe that? I believe the Word. The Word. And the Scripture said, Thy Word is a lamp under my feet and a light under my pathway. You and I cannot even come close to finding where God wants us to be except we abide in the Word. Amen? Amen? Amen. I sat down on the communion table one evening 
years ago. I, I, I had started the message and I was preaching pretty hot and heavy. And the Lord just told me to go sit down. And there wasn't no chair out there, so I sat on the communion, communion table. And I sat there and I taught the rest of that lesson from that position, sitting down. And I had people just looking, looking. And finally one of them had said, well, do you like your sound? You feeling bad? No. No. This is what God told me to do. I said, can you not hear me? Kind of like that commercial. Can you hear me now? And they said, well, yeah, we hear you very plainly. I said, well, if you can hear me, then what's the difference in sitting here and you hear me and running the aisles and you hear me? I've always been a very active individual in the pulpit or out of the pulpit, I should say. But what they were trying to say is, we've never seen you minister like that before. That's different. Well, Jesus sat on the side of the hill. Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if I had a hill, I'd be sitting on that. I am. I am. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> sitting on top of the hill. Amen. We were we we were talking to a waitress yesterday, <laughs> and uh, she was kind of scolding us because we didn't come to that particular restaurant very often. And I said, well, we live a distance from here. Well, where do you live? I said, Diamond Hill. She looked at me kind of funny and she said, where's that? I said, it's four. But we, we had a good conversation. And she laughed and talked with us all the way through our meal. And, and I thought to myself, how wonderful it would be for people to be that inviting to those who frequent our place of worship. Amen. Oh, I just don't know. You won't never know until you talk to them. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> what did old Robert say about that veil? not a bell until you ring it. Amen? Amen. Love is not love until it's given away. Amen. Until it's shared. It's important, church, that we pray for one another, that we lift up one another, that we build up one another, and building up one another, that means Brother John's joints is supposed to supply what my joints need. And I'm supposed to supply what he needs, and then what Brother Larry needs, and what Sister Letha needs. All of these things are accomplished through and by the Word of God itself. The Word will enter into you and will supply every particle of your being what it needs. There's not one thing that God would want you to leave here needing today. Amen. 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 Whether it be Comfort, peace, healing, deliverance, salvation, whatever it is that you need, it's here for you. But you have to bring yourself into a position with God to get what you need. You, it's up to you. It ain't the preacher's fault. Amen. And I don't say that because I'm the preacher. It's just being the preacher too. It's not her fault. Amen. It's not her fault. If you're not getting what you need, it's not, it's not. The only problem is you. The only limitation is you. God has no limit. But we limit Him because of our unbelief. Oh, I can trust God to heal. Hey, but does 
Would he really heal cancer? But he did. Amen. This was cancer free, but it left its mark. Just like sin. Amen. Every time that we allow ourselves to fall into sinful things, it makes it mark. And though we be forgiven, sometimes the mark is still there. And we have to we have to endure it at times. And we have to see what God has done. And that's why I like to remind you every now and then that when, when you come before God and you do it the way the Word says in Jesus' name, then that blood has covered you. And God does not look at you, the human being. He sees Christ, the sacrifice. He sees His Son standing right where you are. And He hears the petition through the Son that's sitting right there. Amen. He makes our petition known before God. He reveals to us the things that's so needed in our life. We don't always know what to do or where to go or when to go. But God knows everything. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. <laughs> oh. What do you need from God today? What do you need? Have you brought that petition before Him? Do you believe in the Son? Do you trust the Son? Amen? See, you've got to believe and trust in order to get the need met that's in your life. No matter what the need is, God can fix your situation. I'll guarantee you, God can fix your situation. But you've got to believe. Amen. We can help you. We can pray with you. We can help you to pray. We can help you know how to pray. But God, say that. But God. So, I'm asking. You got a need today? You ought to be in that aisle.